Once again, folk, it's time for our, our morning devotions. But uh, at the outset, uh, we'd just like to wish our beloved District Superintendent, Pastor John Huerson, happy birthday today. John, may God bless you today. And we just want to thank you for all that you do for us. And uh, we hope that you get lots of presents today. And may God bless you. And may you have a happy day from all of us here in Marisburg. And I'm sure from all the churches across the district. May God bless you. Amen. Now, today um, we're going to concentrate on prayer. And uh, what I call the greatest ministry of all, which is intercession. If you have your Bibles, please, it's from 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30. And later on, uh, we're going to refer to Ezekiel chapter 22. Father, we ask you now to bless uh, this, what we're going to talk about from out of our word. Uh, make it fall into prepared ground and inspire us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the Bible says, then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was broken down. Um, the altar, uh, it stands for the place where we meet with God and the place where God meets with us. And that sacred place is the, the place of prayer. Now, at the time of Elijah, uh, Israel had backslidden, they turned from God, and they turned to idols. Idols, uh, idol worship is the most common sin in the Bible. The Bible goes on to say in 1 Kings 18, verse 18, um, uh, Elijah rebuked the people and he said, You have refused to obey the Lord and you have worshipped Baal instead. Elijah was very jealous for the, the honor of the Lord. Are you jealous for the honor of the Lord? And you see all this that's turning the, the church, believers across the world, turning away from the Lord. Are you jealous for the honor of the Lord? God needs Elijah's who will stand in the gap. And here he is calling the nation back to God. So he calls the people together and in a great open air meeting on the slopes of Mount Carmel. He, he, uh, he uh, draws their attention to the matter of Almighty God and their allegiance to Him. And so in full view of Him and all the false prophets of Baal, Elijah proceeds to repair the altar of the Lord which had broken down. And uh, he takes 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel and with these he repairs the altar of the Lord and then in full view of everyone he places the sacrifice upon it there is silence and they are wondering what he's going to do and they're wondering what the outcome of this is going to be and so there when the uh, sacrifice is on the altar and when he places the last piece of wood on the altar the Bible says in in chapter 18 verse 37 he calls upon the name of the Lord and he says Lord God answer me so that these people will know that you are God answer me Lord that these people will know that you are God and that you have brought them back to yourself and the Bible goes on to say then fire flashed down from heaven and it burnt up the sacrifice and at this display of God's presence and power it was so astonishing that the Bible says they fell down on their faces before Almighty God, crying out, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. At this time that we are in, especially this worrying time, uh, it's possible that um, when churches find it so difficult to come together to worship, that believers can become slack in their devotion to God and it's so easy for the fire in their hearts to go out and if we neglect the, the discipline of our, our daily meeting with God uh, in our quiet times there are four principles that we should observe and if we neglect our quiet time with God 
the discipline of prayer, the discipline of Bible reading, the discipline of intercession, and the discipline of praise. Those are the four elements of our meeting with God. If we are, are slack in that, then you know what will happen? The love in our hearts toward God will cool down and it will go out. We have to protect the fire in our hearts at all costs. General Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, one day he was talking to some of his cadets and this is what he said to them. He said, brethren, watch the fire in your heart. He said, keep it burning. He said, please, brothers, remember the tendency of fire is to go out. Don't neglect your personal daily time with the Lord. Keep the fire burning. Don't let the fire go out in your hearts. In our quiet time, our daily start to the day, we should give God the best time of the day, which usually is the morning. We call that the morning watch. So if at all possible, in your quiet time, let it be in the morning before you do anything else. <clears throat> Keep as close to that time and discipline as you can. We should remember, at this time of isolation, the devil is hard at work and he's trying to estrange us from one another and from God. He's trying to let us cool off, but we mustn't let him. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 to 9, Peter says, we must be watchful. The devil, like a roaring lion, is out to get you. He says, what you have to do, brothers, he says, resist him through prayer and faith. And if we'll do that, James 4, 7 says, then he will flee from you. Brothers and sisters, we have to keep the fire going in our hearts. Do you remember when times were normal? No. It's just a memory now. But do you remember when times were normal? The prayer meeting was easily accessible to all who would want to come. But so few did. Why? Why? Because they found very little in the prayer meeting to attract them. Uh, Leonard Ravenhill, the great revivalist, this is what he said about the prayer meeting. He said, the prayer meeting is the Cinderella of the church. You know the fairy tale about Cinderella? She had all those ugly sisters. And she was the target. He said, the prayer meeting is like the Cinderella of the church. Cinderella wasn't popular with her sisters. And because Cinderella was so plain and so ordinary. Uh, she had no appeal to the others of a different set of standards. And um, the prayer meeting is still not appealing or attractive to many. Yet who was it that fell in love with Cinderella? Who was it? Can you remember? It was a handsome prince. A handsome prince. And the prince of the prayer meeting is Jesus. He loves the prayer meeting. He loves it. And if any believer or anyone else needs to find the Lord Jesus Christ. If any congregation needs to find the Lord Jesus Christ, they will find him through prayer. Now, brothers and sisters, if you want to avoid spiritual stagnation, then you should pay more attention to prayer, especially in these days, than we've ever done before. It's vital. It's vital. Tell me, do you long to see God display some sign of his power? Then let us commit ourselves to prayer. James 4 verse 8 says, We must draw near to God, and then he will draw near to you. This Sunday morning, did you sleep in? Did you skimp on your quiet time? Did you take time to draw near to God and pray? You must exercise the discipline of drawing near to him. And then he reciprocates and he draws near to us. Now some people might say, you know, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. Uh, that's not true. You can pray, of course. Anybody can pray. Uh, 
you know, when you pray, what happens? Uh, Christ's prayer life, it, it enters into you, and then he prays in and through us. Romans 8 verse 26 says, The Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings and utterings that um, we can hardly bear it because of the burden. Uh, uh, there is a power that God yields to. And the only power that God yields to is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. In Acts chapter 12, when Peter was in prison under the sentence of death, uh, there was no hope that Peter would escape. And in the morning, he was going to be beheaded and that would be the end of him. But what moved the hand of God Acts chapter 12 verse 5 says, Constant prayer was offered to God for him by whom? The church. Constant prayer was offered for him uh, by church, the church. Uh, there is power in corporate prayer. Wonderful power. Now tell me in this matter of prayer, what is the most noble form of prayer that there is. It's the prayer of the intercessor. Who was the greatest intercessor of all? Who was the greatest intercessor of all? Without a doubt, it was our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read the scriptures, he was always praying for somebody else. Always, always. Very seldom for himself. And he is the one who stands in the gap between God and man. And what is he doing? He is pleading for them. His prayer is always for others. Right up to the end. From the cross. He cries out. And he says to, uh, to his father. He cries out from the depths of his heart. He said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. Others praying for them. For God's mercy. You know, God is not only looking for more preachers. When everybody prays, Oh God, raise up preachers, raise up more workers, which is true and it's right. But you know, God is not only looking for more preachers, He is looking for more men and women who will pray. Who will pray. There was a young man called into full-time service and um, his great weakness he felt was he couldn't preach couldn't preach and um, but the thing is this he knew how to prevail with God in prayer and uh, he said to a friend one day he said you know I don't see how God can use me because uh, I haven't got any special talent and he said to, said to him my brother God wants men in his service who can pray he says there are too many preachers now. Hundreds of them. He said, but there are too few intercessors. God is looking for intercessors. And this young man went to his room and he locked the door and he went to God in prayer. And he could be heard pleading with God, asking God to use him somehow. And then when he had prayed through, he asked the Lord, please give me a ministry. And what ministry did the Lord give him? The ministry of intercession. An intercessor is somebody who stands in the gap on behalf of, 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 who stands in the gap before God on behalf of that person that God would show mercy. And the outcome of that young man's meeting with God, God gave him the gift of winning souls. That's the underlining ministry of everything that we do. It must be culminate in somebody finding Christ and so he prayed and the gift of intercessor was given to him and they say after that uh, 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 people would seek him out and they would come to him and say brother how can I be saved and this went on and on and it was the, the, the feature of his ministry uh, do you feel there's nothing you can do there's something you can do of course God is looking for intercessors can be old or young, doesn't matter. 
He's looking for someone who will stand in the gap and pray. If you think of church history and all the mighty outpourings of God uh, upon nations and congregations and where people turn to God, uh, it can be traced back to an intercessor somewhere. It doesn't just happen. D.L. Moody, he said, every great movement of God can be traced to a kneeling figure somewhere. Somewhere. Have you accepted Christ? You didn't just happen to get saved. Somebody had been praying for you. A mother for her son. Husband for his wife. His unsaved, uh, his, his saved wife for the unsaved husband and so forth. Uh, the principle is there. Uh, when God does something, it's because somebody prayed, prayed, stood in the gap. The last gift that believers seem to ask for is the gift of the intercessor. As Elijah placed the wood on the fire, it, it was that last piece of wood that he placed on the fire that brought the fire down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice and all the nation fell on their faces before God and they said, the Lord he is God. The Lord he is God. It's that last piece of wood. It's that last piece of wood that brings the fire down. And the last piece of wood is, 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 is the, the, uh, the prayer of the intercessor. It's that which brings the fire down. It's the heavy artillery, if you like, in the spiritual war against Satan. Now I'm going to close. Uh, the Bible says in Ezekiel 22, verses 30 to 31, and this is God speaking from a broken heart. He says, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But he said, I found no one. Therefore, I've poured out my wrath upon them. Someone to stand in the gap before God on behalf of someone else. Someone else. I'm going to close now with something that you may not have heard of before. Um, at the time of his presidency, uh, the late George Bush Sr., he was the President of the United States, and um, uh, a former missionary, uh, Bob Shogren, uh, he became so concerned for uh, George Bush, who, by the way, was a born-again Christian. If you've watched the Billy Graham uh, 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 showings of the great uh, campaigns that he had, and one of them, George Bush, came to the, the, the microphone and he gave his public testimony of his belief in Jesus Christ as his saviour. Now, when he was the president, the president served for a four-year term, and he was so concerned about the president that he arranged a, a, a prayer and fasting a regiment of intercessors who would pray for the president, um, uh, that would volunteer to give one day any day of the month to fast and pray for George Bush as the president and uh, he did that and for every day of his presidency there possibly would be anything from one praying and fasting believer even up to a thousand or more daily praying for the president asking God for wisdom for him God and give him wisdom and for his cabinet and they emphasize and for his personal holiness, his relationship to God, and then also for protection from the devil and his attacks. And it was a comfort to President Bush to know that there is someone fasting for me each day. And President Bush's uh, presidency was a successful one. No scandal, nothing like that. It was because he was uh, supported by prayer. Brothers and sisters, are you looking for a ministry? If you are, have you thought to ask God to give you the ministry of the intercessor? Someone who will stand in the gap before God on behalf of someone else. For our nation, uh, our president needs something like what they did in America. A mighty praying force. Somebody daily fasting and praying for wisdom for him. For him. And who knows, it might lead to a mighty revival throughout our country, 
like the sights of which we've never seen before. Brethren, who will be willing to stand in the gap, commit themselves to fast and pray, stand before God, so that the wrath of God does not descend upon the nation? Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the role of the intercessor. Raise up holy men and women, Lord, who will stand before thee on behalf of the nation, on behalf of a, a child, a family member, or any other worthy cause, Lord, that's heavy upon our hearts. Bless us all now with your love and with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.